All right. Uh, first of all, thanks everybody for being here. You know, excited for my first opportunity to get to know you all and have an opportunity to speak in front of you all. Um, obviously, very fortunate to be here. Um, Alabama is a place that has proven to be pretty special to coach at. We have great young men. We have great players here uh, that are hungry to get better and hungry to do things the right way. You know, I'm surrounded every day by, you know, I think the best offensive staff, defensive staff, and support staff in the country. And, you know, the people here have really, you know, opened their arms and treated us well. And, you know, I think we have a ton of buy-in right now amongst our staff and players, which makes coming to work really enjoyable every day. And, you know, I think we're all energized and hungry to continue to practice and continue to get better and continue to see how good we can be. Um, you know, this is something that we take very seriously, something that we take a lot of pride in. And uh, we're excited to continue this thing to go in the right direction and, you know, see, uh, you know, how our players continue to respond and get better. But, you know, we're in the uh, only three days into training camp here, so a lot of questions, a lot of things to continue to unfold. But we really are enjoying the direction that the players are going in and, you know, believe that we have, you know, a good blend of veteran presence and, and young talent. And uh, it's our job as coaches and as staff to continue to put them in position to have success and, you know, try to get the very most out of them. So, again, thanks so much for you guys being here. I'm, you know, excited to get to know everybody. And I guess we'll open up to questions, Josh, yeah, whenever. Hey, Tommy. Uh, Mike Golick Jr., uh, I think, tells a story about a decade ago, you guys were sitting in the locker room, uh, and someone posed the question, if you come back as another position, what would it be? And he said that you said pulling guard. Uh, yeah. why, why did you give that answer? Um, and I wasn't a very good quarterback, so I, I figured I could take another shot somewhere. Um, yeah, I just – like that physical part of the game has always resonated with me. You know, I think, you know, the offensive line is a group that is – can be unsung a little bit. And, you know, really without that group of five in front of you, it's hard to do anything well, not just run the football, not just throw the football, but really like you're facing an uphill battle. And, you know, I just always like the camaraderie of the group of the guys up front. And – there's a toughness to this game that I always felt like I missed by playing quarterback and something that I kind of longed for. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've brought that up a few times. Coach, you competed against Coach Saban while you were a quarterback at Notre Dame. But to get that call to come be a coach on this staff, what was that emotion like for, for you that you were the one that got the call? Yeah, I mean, I um, – Shoot, I competed against him as a player, sort of, and then, again, as a coach in 20. Um, so, obviously, you know, I've faced two great teams in this program's history, and, and really preparing for those games, you could see and feel just the intensity at, what, at which Alabama prepared in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the call is something that, you know, to be honest with you, a little, you know, surreal. But at the end of the day, this is my profession. This is something that, you know, I want to be doing for a long time. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that if the opportunity to interview did present itself after the call, that it was something I was prepared for. Um, you know, obviously just knowing Coach from a distance there and, and what, you know, he, you know, looks for in his coaches and what he expects of the guys in, in this building, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was fully prepared to, you know, have an opportunity that, you know, was presented to me. And, um, you know, you kind of try to flush the emotion as, as quickly as you can and just, you know, take it as, you know, another interview because that's really what it was and try not to let any of that other stuff, you know, cloud your judgment or mind. Coach, in the past, rather offensive coordinators that have been here like Brian Dayball, Mike Loxley, obviously Bill O'Brien, they say Coach Saban wants you to learn the offense as opposed to bringing in your own system. Is it almost like going back in time and learning a whole new offense and how steep has that learning curve been for you? Yeah, first of all, I think it's the right way to do it. Um, you know, there's been a system in place here for however many years, and you have players here that are familiar with terminology, with what you're trying to accomplish. And so to say one guy's going to come in here and change everything would be the wrong way to approach it. You know, I full heartedly agree with that. Um, you know, the learning curve is what it is. I don't, I don't find it to be too steep at all. You know, I think when you have a general base knowledge of the game, there's only so many run plays you can run, only so many pass concepts you can have. It's just training your brain to – switch how you call it. Um, so really it's not, wasn't a steep learning curve at all. Um, you know, this offense obviously has been prolific over the last decade and, um, you know, to come in here and say we're going to change all these things would be foolish. You know, there's certain things that we want to do or alter, or, you know, look at to enhance it, but a wholesale change would never make sense. And so, um, you know, there are still times where, 
you know, you got to remind yourself, hey, this is, you know, we're calling it this. And again, we have a great staff, great support staff with our analysts and GAs that help us, you know, with all those issues and all those little things. But um, our players have really bought into what we're asking them to do. And, you know, for me to come in and learn the system was, was really a smooth, smoother transition than maybe, you know, I anticipated. Tommy, you're from Chicago, spent a lot of time in South Bend. Has there been anything that you found weird or unexpected in a non-football sense about moving to the state of Alabama? Um, no, I mean, we've really embraced, you know, the differences and, and the culture. Um, it's hotter, you know. I mean, we learned that yesterday pretty quick. Um, but, no, I mean, the people have been really warm. You know, for us, we've, we've come in here and really felt, you know, welcomed and all that. I mean, I think when we moved into our house, we had about 10 neighbors come off and drop baskets. That's something that probably hadn't happened for me before. Um, you know, the thing that really I resonate the most with is the love and the passion for the game of football. I mean, I was at a spring scrimmage on a Thursday night during, you know, the month of May and recruiting, and you felt like it was a Friday night in the fall. And that's something, somebody that loves the game and grew up around it, like, that energized me. And you feel the passion and the support of the people and the fans, you know, for this game and for this program and at the high school level. It's really cool to be a part of. And so, you know, we fully embraced it. We've, you know, loved being here and, and really are enjoying it. Tyler Buckner is a guy you obviously knew at Notre Dame. Just kind of what was the process of him coming here? How active were you in wanting him to come to Alabama? Yeah, I mean, um, look, when he went into the portal and, you know, we looked at an opportunity to add competition to the room. Um, you know, I think competition at all positions is going to bring out the best in individuals. It's going to add, you know, an extra layer of development. It's going to allow people to rise, you know, with, with the competition. And I think one thing we're trying to get the whole quarterback group to understand is, when one guy has success, first of all, we need to look at it as shared success. We need to look at it as the group. Like, we want to leave practice saying the quarterback position, the quarterback group had a good day. You know, the other thing we want to see is when one quarterback has success, it's going to challenge the rest of the group. Rest of the group. And when we can do that, it's going to raise the level of play in the room. And so we don't want to look at it and shy away from it. We want to look at it as an opportunity to improve the, group, improve the entire group. You know, to answer your question probably more directly, I, you know, Ty's a guy I recruited at a young age. Obviously spent two seasons with him. You know, I think, you know, he provides a little bit of uh, a veteran presence in the room and adds some competition. And, you know, I think he's hit the ground running with the rest of the guys on the team, you know, especially with the rest of the quarterbacks. And it's been really a healthy transition. <clears throat> kind of piggybacking off that, what does it say about both Jalen and Ty that they stuck around after you bring in a guy from the portal? And what kind of progress were you seeing from those two? Yeah, I think they've both improved greatly from the spring. You know, I think there's been an extra buy-in, you know, since spring ball ended and just doing more and doing extra to get themselves prepared. You know, I think it shows, first of all, a great amount of character, a great amount of competitiveness for those two guys. But it also shows a love for their teammates and a love for being here. And, and honestly, it speaks volumes about the program that guys want to stay here. And so I think it's really special that, you know, in this age of college football, especially at the quarterback position when guys are so eager to leave, that two guys looked at an opportunity to stay here, to care about their teammates, to continue to improve. And, you know, ultimately we're trying to build as healthy of a room as we can. And they understood that competition can bring out the best in them. And, you know, they've been great, you know, the entire process, you know, throughout. And, you know, I don't expect that to change. <clears throat> You've been pretty open about your love for physical and, and, and running style of football. What do you see from the backfield you have? And do you think that that could be something that you can really lean on this, this fall? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we have a great group there. You know, we have a really healthy blend of some veteran guys. You know, obviously we have a couple of young players, you know, in the room still. And, um, you know, I think they all play a physical brand of football. I th all think they're, um, you know, they're extremely well prepared. Coach Gillespie does an unbelievable job with that room. Really never any issues. They know their assignment. They play hard. They play physical. You know, and, and we have a great blend of guys that can do a kind of a little bit different things coming out of the backfield in the pass game you know, running between the tackles. So uh, we're a little bit spoiled at that position, if I'm being honest with you. You know, we're, we're very talented there. And, you know, I'm excited to see how the pieces fall together and excited to see how we can enhance some of those guys' roles moving forward. Coach, you opened up and talked about learning the Alabama offense, but your, the Notre Dame offense that you've been running over the last couple of years does look a little bit different th than what Alabama has run. How much freedom do you feel uh, to implement the wrinkles or implement the style that you want to uh, that you've been used to running at Notre Dame? 
Yeah, I think, you know, philosophically, you know, we always start with how can we win with people? How can we win with the people that we have? And how can we put them in a position to be successful? So any wrinkle is really personnel driven. Like these guys do these things well or we're built to do this. That's what we want to focus on. And then, you know, we continue to bring the other parts along. Um, so I do think, you know, there's the freedom there to say, hey, we can do these three things well that we can implement into the offense and enhance it. Um, I do think, you know, we're probably going to look different than we did when I was elsewhere because our personnel is different. There's different strengths. There's different, you know, areas that, that we can take advantage of. So, again, we don't have, you know, a system or I don't have a system that says, hey, you have to fit into these squares. It's more about how can I fit what you do in, and what you do really well into enhancing our offense. And, again, our mantra is win with people, and, you know, we're going to find ways to allow our players to be in positions to have great success. Hey, uh, Coach, uh, repping three quarterbacks, uh, I know there's five out there, but when you're looking at three guys for the uh, competition, how hard is that when you're having to split it in thirds rather than in 50% or uh, in the challenges? Yeah, I mean, there are some challenges. Um, we practice in a way that there are, you know, plenty of opportunities and reps for all those guys to get. You know, I think it would, the thing I'm fortunate for is our quarterbacks understand it and they, you know, don't have any egos and they're, you know, we're, we're trying to, tell them, hey, when you're in there, you're the guy, and we want you to own those opportunities, to own those reps. And so they've bought into that. They've been supportive of one another. You know, Eli and Dylan are still getting plenty of reps. We're really repping five guys right now, which is, you know, probably really rare. You go across the country, probably nowhere in the country is repping five guys. But the way we practice, the way we give our guys opportunities, it allows for that to happen. And our players have bought into it. And, um, you know, we have had opportunities to give them, you know, longer chunks of plays to get them into a rhythm. Sometimes it's a little choppier, but, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we're mixing up how we're rotating. We're mixing up the different periods that guys get so that they're exposed to different situational football. And, um, again, our players have made it easy for me because they've been receptive to it and they just want to make the most of every opportunity they've had. Morning, Coach. What are your impressions of how the tight end room has continued to develop since spring practice, and what is the potential for that group? Yeah, I think uh, Coach Cox, he's done an unbelievable job of, you know, getting that room to continually and steadily approve. Uh, I think we have more than enough talent in that room. I think we have a lot of different body types in that room, which allows us to kind of mix and match the personnel and use them in some different roles. Um, but it's a room that's deep, it's a room that's talented, and it's a room that's steadily improving. You know, I think, again, you know, you bring in CJ, who's a veteran, played a lot of football. You have some guys that were on the roster a year ago that didn't play a ton, but you're, you know, hoping that they continue to progress. And um, I think they've done that. I think, again, like I said, the room looks different top to bottom. Like, everybody has different strengths and things that they do really well. And so our job as a staff is to make sure that we can personnel things the right way to get the right people in the right spots. You just kind of touched on it, but your approach to tight ends at Notre Dame compared to what you might have here personnel-wise and then also what you might have at wide receiver and kind of deciding what personnel to put on the field. Yeah, I think obviously that's a week-to-week -week decision a little bit with how we're trying to attack a team and what the theme of that you know game plan would be. Um, you know, Again, I think our tight ends are, are plenty talented enough here right now to feature them in some things, but – and we have a deep receiver room that's talented as well. So that blend of, you know, how can we be, you know, still a physical brand of football with the personnel we have on the field, but also understand that, you know, we have some wideouts that can really break games open. And so, you know, again, as a staff, the blend of personnel and the way we use it and the way we can keep a defense off balance by looking different play to play is something that, you know, we want to have, you know, at our disposal. And so, you know, I think we have tight ends that can do a lot of different things for us. You know, we have plenty of wideouts that can go make plays and put them in position to be successful. And, you know, we were fortunate at Notre Dame to have good tight ends, but I don't really see it any different, you know, with the group we have here. How do you go about building a relationship with a quarterback? Yeah, not different than probably any other relationship that matters, you know, in your life. I think, you know, it has to build, be built on – you know, you got to relate with people. You got to be honest with them. You got to build trust from an early onset. Um, you got to find something off the field that you can connect with so that they don't feel like it's always just transactional, right? There needs to be an actual caring relationship there. And so, you know, I think early on, um, you know, you, you show them that you care. You show them that you want to build trust. You, you show them that, 
you know, you're going to put the expectations, you know, at a high level and hold them to that all the time, and, and that's what they want. Uh, but then you got to have moments, too, away from the game where you can have a relationship based on, you know, other interests and other things that they're into. Um, I do believe that the relationship between a play caller and the quarterback is as important as anything. And so, you know, they got to be an extension of what we're trying to do as a staff. And, you know, I think the only way you can get there is if there's full trust and it's a two-way street between the play caller and the quarterback. All right, guys, thanks so much.